Ghana's ambassador to Burkina Faso described the country as a haven for Sahelian terrorists. He was analyzing the threat terrorist activities in the Sahel region posed to the country. With elections in the rear at a time when cost of living is sky high, we explore what precarious situation we may find ourselves in. On Art Issues Today, we ask, how safe are you in Ghana? I am Kemeni Amano. On the program today, we take a keen look at Ghana's security and how it's been woven by the decisions made in our past. My guest has held high military ranks in different political eras, a former chief of the defense staff and national security advisor. For some time now, he has cautioned leaders about the country's current past. My guest is Brigadier General Joseph Nunu Mensa, retired. You're welcome to Hot Issues. Thank you very much. What will be your assessment of the current state of security in Ghana? Uh, it is worrying. As somebody who has had a very busy military career, I thought after we came or we freed ourselves from the PNDC in 1992 with the new constitution, life would be much more pleasant, political life would be more pleasant. But I think that right now it is more hectic than I thought it would be. You know, I didn't like military governments. I, don't, I still don't like them. Mm. I don't like autocratic governments. Really? Yes, even though I'm a military man. I'm here not to run Ghana, but to protect Ghana from our enemy, you know, perceived enemies. But now I can see that we hate ourselves more than other people. I mean, what I say we, we, the people of Ghana, the especially mm -hmm. our political parties hate each other so much so that they can, they are prepared to burn the country if, you know, it means securing power rather than right. letting I our mean, opponents. What is it that they're doing that is giving you that conclusion? In, in, in 1996, I'd come from Britain after 10 years in self-exile, in post-exile. And I did politics. And the reason was simply that I didn't think that they would do the politics the way I thought they should do it in the military. Mm. When something is going wrong, and I know it's wrong, even it's my party. So I don't, I don't, I don't speak against it. No, I, I didn't understand it. So I thought, I was talking to my wife all the time, said, but nobody hears you here, so go to parliament and argue a case there. Of course, I didn't win the election mm -hmm. in 1996. But I never thought that politics was going to be, going to be a frank discussion of issues, and then let's find common solution to our national issues. But I found it wasn't like that. How would you describe politics today? It's just to make money. I mean, I didn't think that you go into politics to make money, but I think people just go into politics to drive a land cruiser, to, to, mm. to, to live well. Meanwhile, we have thousands and thousands and thousands of our young people roaming the streets mm. with their jobs. And that upsets me. My mother used to you know, sell on, on not on the, on the street, but in the market, common items like plant, plantain, cassava, and whatnot. So you go to Makola and see people sitting on the streets. Mm. And it looks like, like, like some, I mean, what, like I'm in a dream. What is, what, what is going on? After 70, what? How many years of independence? 70, whatever. We are so behaving as if we became independent yesterday. Do those conditions that you have just outlined yeah. threaten the security of the country? When, when you don't have enough to feed your people, when mothers don't have enough, not imported items, but a very simple, healthy diet, balanced diet to feed their children, any father seeing my children hungry, I will react. It is, it's extremely dangerous to the state if you can't feed your people, especially young people. Mm. So it's a big threat to our livelihood, big threat to our the execution of our state mm. if we cannot feed ourselves. In this fourth republic, was there a time when we were so close to, you know, perhaps a coup d'etat, some kind of an uprising mm. in, in this recent history? What would that time be? Of course, I, I, I lived abroad for some time, at least 10 years I was abroad. And I came back to Ghana. Ghana has always been my, 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 I mean, I wouldn't want to live abroad anyway. 
But when, when, when I see opposition government members, opposition members in parliament, and sometimes you find that they're not thinking about you and I, thinking about themselves. And the thing that worries me a lot is when clearly government is taking action that is not going to be helpful to the people. Mm -hmm. And if their own members are mute, the opposition also sit down there as if it's okay. What they know is not okay. I, I couldn't believe it. You see, in my career, I went to some of the best schools in the world. Sanchez, where changed kings and King Charles and you know, uh, King Hussein and all the great men trains you. And they train you to be brave, to be truthful, to be, have integrity, mm. speak your mind. So when, when, when I am in the government, and indeed I was once, I didn't mention to you, but I pay manager to our person, the president. Yes. I didn't mention to you. But we were going together, <laughs> going eventually. Together. <laughs> okay, then, then I'll show you that we can get there properly. But, and when, 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 at my age, I was 88, I can only see, when I look into the, into the mirror and see my, my gray hair, then I say, I'm, I'm getting old. But uh, I have enough brains to be helpful. Mm. But nobody calls at general. What do you think about this? What is it? You know, nobody, as if it don't matter. Mm. You know, and that worries because uh, we are building a nation that will survive us years and years to come. Today, you're talking about many, many people are gone. 19 I mean, wh what would you have been advising the government to do if your help or sort? About a few years ago, you see, I'm concerned about this country. I don't know why. I'm so concerned. So when I see issues that are bothering me, I don't keep quiet. I speak about it. And, and more importantly, I want to talk to the, those in political authority who, who can do something about the problem. So this full situation, which we are in now, mm -hmm. is a serious issue. And I saw it. So the military gives you, and as also when you are getting gray hair <laughs> on your head, you see things the ordinary, ordinary hair, ordinary black hair, don't, don't see. Because you have, you've seen the world for a very long time. You know. And I tried to see the president and, and advise, with a good a senior friend of mine, 90 years now, and talk about issues like youth unemployment. Mm -hmm. It's a threat. We don't have youth women in the streets without jobs. And we can take jobs for them. I know I can. I know even, even at my you know, seat. But we have leaders that, you see, you should be born. You, I have children, three children. One is a leader. The others are not leaders. You are born a leader. There are certain things in you which make, which make you stand out as a mm. leader. But if you don't have those things, and there are others that can add to your value, mm. do that. A lot of our politicians aren't born leaders. They are not. I haven't seen. <laughs> when I go back, I serve under Kwame Nkrumah as a captain in the army, mm -hmm. not far from here, Flagstaff House. So you call it what, Jubilee House. Why Jubilee House? What made it Jubilee? Mm -hmm. Because you added, when, when Christ was asked, he said, look, I came to add, I didn't come to subtract. Let's add to what others came to, to do, mm -hmm. rather than try to subtract from what they you know, have come to do. So when you see things like youth roaming the streets, it worries me. Back in 2014, as uh, you know, a key a key voice in governance, you said, if you don't want the job, Ghana is not a police state. Take your passports and get yeah. out of this country, and don't destroy the country for us. If you cannot sacrifice, like what some of us have done, yes. then get out. If Take the kitchen passport. is too hot, get out. Get out. Yes. That was you back yes. then. The I kitchen mean, is hot now. It's just hot, uh, but, I'm, but, still, but I'm, I'm saying the kitchen. Hang on. I, I wonder why. And, and if, if you're taking this tangent, mm. one would say that's double standards. Mm. No, I mean, if you, if you know the context in which I said this, mm -hmm. you will understand me. I, I have built six, seven school blocks on my own. When I said build, I didn't go to uh, sit in a land cruiser with the air conditioner on and say, Rabbi, go and do this. If you saw me then, you see an old man with a red shirt pushing a wheelbarrow. Lifting a six-inch block, pushing the, the mixing concrete, waking up at three o'clock, going to Tishi or rally at five, by five, and building a school in 50 days. As if the school belonged to me. You see, I love this country. 
I've been to Mori, Konyakun, the Rampo, all these places. If you saw me going in there, you would think I'm a madman. Because I, why, why wouldn't you have a good sleep and wake up at 3 o'clock? I want Ghana to develop. Mm -hmm. So I give my all to Ghana. So when, at this very time that I am quoted to have said this, I was being all right. Really, I had been dismissed from, they were living beyond the cathedral at Asylum Down. They were ejected. They were sitting outside without, without accommodation. A whole school, the fourth oldest school in Ghana. Right. So I saw it, I said, no, no, do something about this. Then I, I, I moved like, like a general in action. And in 50 days, I, I got a land. You got by, them the school? The, on my own. Mm -hmm. When they were going to launch this school, a beautiful school, today, without me, the school wouldn't, wouldn't be alive today, with over 1,200 students. And there were people going on strike against the government. Mm -hmm. And I said, look, why am I not also going on strike, but I'm building a school? You are paid, then this triple, whatever, spine thing had been implemented. So your pay had gone up three times. And they were demonstrating, and they were paying them. And I said, look, if you don't work, I didn't say any, any reason why you should be paid. When I, without food, or really, I'm not a gun. I'm not an old boy. Not to school of my children. Right. And I go to do this. So I said, look, if you can copy exactly what I'm doing and think Ghana is no good, get out. Do you think it was a fair comment you made to the striking workers at that time? No, I think given what I was doing, mm. given what I today, today. But, but it wasn't about you. It was about them at that about time. About Ghana. Uh, yes. And, and they're not helping Ghana. Ghana. But I'm helping Ghana. Mm. And they went on strike. The most, I said, look, today, if you were, I live not far from the U.S. Embassy. I won the yes, party yesterday. If you saw the crowd there, you might think Potoko and House of Folk are playing football. And that, I couldn't even look at it. I couldn't look at it. And so, so, General, that's what I'm talking about, but, but, right? But, you know, right? Right, hang on. That's what I'm talking yeah. about. That if you made that comment yeah. back then in 2014 mm -hmm. and today, you're not making the same comment mm -hmm. uh, to the agitating people mm -hmm. of Ghana, Ghana because of the hardship mm -hmm. that we are going through. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, really, you no, really, I, I you don't, can't understand, you, I can't you, understand you, you may not have the moral right no, to then come and say you were speaking for the people. No. I, I, today, if you saw the crowd leaving, I have sympathy for, with them, with these people. I have sympathy. Because government hasn't done enough. And what government should have done in my days, at least I, as an individual, was trying to. It wasn't enough, but it was, it was you know, it was a step in the right direction. In other words, Ghanaians are leaving in their numbers. I know that where they are going, there's no hope there. Right. But they have, no, they, they have no other solution to their... The people they elected in 1992 for the Constitution, we elected for now today to be for 2 NDC rule, 2 MPP rule. Ghana is much worse off than we were then. Right. So why do we blame the people now? I mean, the government, they're not doing what they should be doing. So now they blame not entirely on the people. I can see they're they hungry. You can't feed your children. Mm. What do you do? I see. I see. Do you have any regrets for the comment you made? Which one? Back then. That if the, if kitchen, the kitchen is too hot for you, get out. Yeah, but no, the point is that, see, I would, if I, mommy, would get up at 3 o'clock, would you get up at 3 o'clock? The school is not my school. And spend my money, no, spend no, my food. No, general. So, and you would not have to build a better Ghana. You know, I, 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 and I respect that you did that for O'Reilly Secondary School. Not only O'Reilly, uh, about six other schools. I see. I respect that. Do you have any regrets for the comment you made about the hardship that other people were going through at that time? They were nowhere near. They were one tenth of today. I absolutely agree. No, no. So, I mean, it was, a, it was a minor hardship. And mm. today, if we in Ghana are going to sit down and buy onions from Burkina Faso, if you go to Guinea, you see the onion market there. We are so lazy that we don't even grow onion to feed ourselves. But in those days, in those days, the poverty I'm talking about, it was not poverty. I mean, there was just lack of a few things. But today, it is, it is serious. So the context in which I made that statement, where I was going, going working up, making food for the workers and feeding them mm -hmm. and build a school for your children and not my children and you wouldn't sympathize to say i'm going i'm on strike i won't work i'm so and so destroying ghana i'm saying that i alone ghana doesn't belong to me and i'm doing the best i could so 
No, to say, to say that they made that, I made that comment. So today, the suffering, I couldn't say the suffering, they just a little bit of hard work. No, today you're speaking for the people. I'm, I'm speaking not for them, for the people. I'm, <laughs> the people can speak for themselves. You're struggling to say you're speaking for the people because you think you do not have the moral right to do that now because of the comment you made no, I'm years speaking, back. No, no, I'm, I'm still making them. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm talking to you. So you're speaking for the How people. How many of us talk like this? How Fantastic. Many people? You started working with uh, the late pre former president, Jerry John Rollins, in 1981. Mm -hmm. That was right after the 1979 coup. No, it was uh, two and a half years later. Two Seven, two. 79, he came to power. That was a lot of anger. Right. The uprising then. The uprising. Right. And, uh, you know, Ghana was at a, at, a, at a crossroads. It was a very dangerous situation where our senior officers had been taken and shot. Mm -hmm. You can't turn your back to Ghana. You can't. You have to do something about mm. this. And among the senior officers who were left then, I was one of them. I couldn't say, look, leave Ghana alone. I had to get involved and do something about it. That was 79. Mm -hmm. So I got them to hand over power to a civilian government. So you were part of that uprising? No, no, no. I, I, was, I was a victim of the uprising. You were, the, you were a victim of the uprising? I was one of those who were being shot, who were being killed. So, so hang on, I want to understand. <laughs> um, be, because then, yeah. if, if you say you were a victim of the uprising, would you then have been part of the SMC2? Yes. Okay. The SMC2 itself had come into... Uh, you know, uh, m military rule because he had he embarked on a coup. No, many people correct? don't understand the situation. But I'm coming from inside that, uh, and maybe it doesn't take a few uh, moments yes. to explain. Rollins had taken power, not Rollins, Rollins didn't take power. It was actually the uprising out of anger, perceived anger of the young officers against the senior officers. But Achampo had come to power a few years back, and then many of my colleagues has misconducted themselves, mm -hmm. angering the young officers. So there was this revolution, there was this, you know, mutiny against senior officers. I was a brigadier at the time. At the time? At the time. Uh, at the time, Kutu E. Champon was, Yes, you know, I, I was among charge. the top, I was chief of, chief of staff. Mm -hmm. You know, chief of defense staff. And chief mm -hmm. of staff is a very powerful individual. So I was part of the, the, the I was a victim of the revolution. How, how are you a victim when you had a position in... in no, because the reason was, I was most of my colleagues were killed, were shot. No, but you weren't. I wasn't because... You were, I was, you were, you I were even given posi a position. The reason being that, today I'm driving a car which is 45 years old. I could have bought two land cruisers. Mm -hmm. See, the soldiers are not fools. They saw a man that was like them. You could have, you could have enriched himself. You could have done... I'm not saying those who were killed and read them. I'm not far from that. Right. But the man was like one of them, you know. So there are some sympathy for me. Mm -hmm. Even though my colleagues, I don't know whether you heard this, but there was a, a colonel who was shot that day of the coup with his mm -hmm. wife, Colonel Nimfo, and his wife. Most pathetic situation. Right. It wasn't a joke. So if you came out of it, either you were lucky, I was lucky in a way. Right. Because a, a, a few days after the coup, for example, I was called, I didn't report immediately after the coup. It was such a difficult situation. You had to understand what was going on. Okay. But when I reported later on, in the three, four days, I think on Friday, this was Monday, four days was Monday, and I was told, uh, President, then Chairman Warren was looking for me. Okay. And when I went to him, he said that I, was, I, I had just been posted to the staff college at Tishy. And the staff, being Canadians and British, had come to ask him to let me go. I don't know how, how they did that. You were under fire, but they had time to think of me. You see, when, when you are doing something, you think people are not watching what you are doing. They sent for me. So Rollins called me then and said, sir, I've been asked to let you go. But before I let you go, let me ask you one question. There was a publication in the Luta Continua from Legon, accusing many of the senior officers of misconducting them. So I was one of those accused. So Rollins asked me, General, is it true? I said, absolute stupidity. He said, sir, you can go. Mm. So as we move around, when you see me, my can nearly not got to your place. I no, no, I, so, so I understand so, so, that. Let's, so, let's stay in the past. Let's talk about, you know, yeah. the, the, the past, right? Yes. So um, despite you saying that you were a victim of the revolution. I was, I, 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 most of my colleagues were short. I, no, I understand that. But you survived. 
and then you became a part of the revolution because then you, you held a position no. within... No, let me explain properly. When I then stayed for three months, in mm -hmm. fact, Akufu had removed a champion and preparing to leave politics. That's what reason why people like me joined the coup, the, 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 the palace coup, I don't know when a champion was removed and Akufu became the head of state. Right. The idea was to leave politics. The idea was simply to leave, not to, not to enjoy politics. Mm -hmm. So within three months, we came in, I was supposed to be came in, and Rolling then had a coup, and then all this, uh, that Wellington was shot not far from here, Nima okay. police station, okay. and everything. But then that was, that Rollins handed over power. Okay. He wasn't prepared. He, he did. To, he handed over power to Liman. To, 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 to Liman after absolutely, election. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. But he also came back again. Uh, I, I wasn't know. part of the coming back. I mean, <laughs> and it, it, <laughs> I left the country and went away. I, you you left the country and left away. No, no. You I left no, the country no, no. in the in the 90s. No, no, no. No, it wasn't before the coup that removed Liman. No, I wasn't. I was in Ghana. You were in Ghana, but, but you were never, not part of the I uprising that had, removed Lima. Exactly, Fantastic. Not. Now that we've got that out of the way, mm. let's talk about why I've been talking about, you know, the, the mm. coup d'etat mm. and the mm. um, uprisings of the mm. past. Now, uh, we, for a long time in this mm. country, we have celebrated June 4th um, anniversary. Mm. Uh, but for some time now, it's become a footnote mm. in the calendar year for uh, this country. What are your thoughts about that? June 4th. Mm -hmm. Celebrating it in what context? I well, mean, I mean, initially we would have a national event. Perhaps we would, ha we had a holiday as well. Now we, we it's a footnote, really. But we well, have a holiday when you slaughtered many of the senior. I think that it's something we shouldn't forget. Mm. To me, the lessons of June 4th are more important. I, don't, but I learned a lot. For example, I just told you about being accused of of, of, of something. This public, I saw it, but I thought it was nonsense. I, you know, I just didn't, didn't mm. you know, think of it. So I'm saying that there are lessons to learn. Well, where we are, mm. if you don't take care. So June 4 commemoration is not important? No, you should remember the event. I mean, you, 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 know, you, have remember, you have to remember the event. We have to. Okay. You know, you have to remember the event. Today, what? In 1944, 6th of June, Allied forces landed in Normandy. Not, they are remembering Ch King Charles is there. Mm. Uh, President uh, uh, Joe Biden is there. I have to remember them. Mm. So but, when you say we have to remember yeah. it, like uh, and learn lessons mean? from them. You see, the, the lessons to me, the lessons are more important. That if you ignore things happening to your youth, if you think that um, you can do whatever you like because you have mm -hmm. power, there will be a time you have to. Answer. So when you are doing something inappropriate, think of it. What is something which is because I'm should, political. Sh should this be a nationally recognized commemoration? Uh, that's where I'm driving. I don't want to. I don't want to. You, I don't want to commemorate it. I mean, I don't want to really. When when you are people whose parents were shot, mm. you are, how would they react to such a such a such a? Okay. How would they react to it? Is it? It's it's not a fine thing. I was my next door neighbor had a baby 10 months old. Mm -hmm. That night, the father and the mother were slaughtered. You want to, you want to, uh, what? Okay. I want to talk about that summary execu execution, mm. right? Mm. Um, you were chief of army staff at that time? No, I was, I was actually, I was at South College at Tishi as mm. the head of that. I, was, I had been removed about three, four months before the June 4th event. So I wasn't, that involved in the administration of the, I was actually not in Burma camp, at, at the head of the, and I had been removed. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have a hand in it. I didn't have any control over it. There was nothing I could do about it. Very well. Okay, so when we come back, I want us to uh, talk a bit more about the military of today mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. with your experience and knowledge of the mm -hmm. military, whether we're on a good mm -hmm. pass, uh, given the mm -hmm. recent you know, stories we have had I between mean, military and, <laughs> well, military and civilian engagements. Mm -hmm. you, you Surely you must have heard about those. Um, a few more on terrorism as well. We'll discuss terrorism and what ap appears to be a safe haven for um, Sahelian terrorists, you know, from our neighbors. Mm -hmm. Don't go away.
My guest on Heart Issues in this edition is a former National Security Advisor and former Chief of the Defense Staff, retired Brigadier General Joseph Nunu Mensah. Uh, thank you so much for um, your patience. You. Now, you know, you've been a military uh, person for a very long time. What would you say is the difference between the military then and the military today? The military then. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, when I say we, myself and a few others that were recruited or enlisted into the army, in 1960, when Nkrumah founded the Ghana Military Academy to create more officers, because we had been independent. We couldn't have the British taking care of us, you know, since we were a fully independent country. So, young boys, young boys, no, not boys, young men, were actually recruited. I was in school. Then, you know, entitled to the army. It was a beautiful profession. A lot of excitement. 1960, young men from all of the schools in Ghana, professional. Before then, these were not professional. You know, there were other soldiers who were um, found, some of them were good enough to become officers. But our group were in take one, for example, in take two, were those that were recruited purposely to become officers. Mm -hmm. The armed forces have two types of soldiers, officers and men. They're different. But in those days, I mean, as I said, we were really, not that you were dunce, I mean, stupid, but I mean, we were telling young people. I mean, of us, a few of us actually, were taken out for further training. Mm -hmm. which I was one of them, a place like Sanchez, the top military school, which trained people all, all over the world. So when they came out, very proud, very professional. You were trained, I mean, you, were, you didn't go to secondary school. I'm sorry, I didn't go to university, but you were as good as anything. It give you good, good education in the military, in politics, in, in everything that you are all-rounded, all-rounded. And I remember very well, first time we landed in, in, in Britain, the first, second week, we went to House of Commons, House of Lords, in army uniform. I never dreamed I would even come to Accra from Winneba. But yeah, I was in, in Britain, mm -hmm. among some of the best in the world. Right. So we were given good, good, solid training. You know, today, I mean, the men that I'm, people like Frifa, Akufu, um, uh, or that Wellington, I mean, these were as good as we'll find them anywhere in the world. You know, I'm not too sure about today. Then again, we were too proud to be politicized. We wouldn't allow ourselves. Mm. We wouldn't allow the NPP in this, whatever, in Cromer's time, NLM or CPP. You know, we would go and vote. And that was the end of it. Do you think the military today is, uh, you know, politicized? It's not the military which have, which have the problem. It's the politicians which have actually politicized the military. Mm. With something I don't advise at all. It's, it's quite dangerous. It's not, it's not good. You see, you are a soldier, you are loyal to your state. If you are a politician, you are loyal to your party. Right. We can't combine the two. How have politicians politicized the military? How have they yes. politicized the military? I don't live far from Burma camp. So some of the things that come across, I hear them. Mm. Not everything you want to say on a national thing. I mean, some of them, you see, when, when, you've always had this problem. When we enlisted the army, tribal problem, this tribe or this, that, that. But one thing in the military that I have learned, we are such a wonderful group of people. You won't believe this. The tribe doesn't matter to us. Mm -hmm. The profession matters so much to us. But today, today, you will hear people saying that this group of people support this party. If this happened, then he said, mm -hmm. an APP is an man. Mm -hmm. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that. I joined the army and, I, and I'm loyal to anybody who is appointed president, who is an elected president, minister, I am loyal to the person. Are you saying the army today is loyal to the politician that puts them there? You see, when you politicize them, for example, for, when you politicize them, you are telling them that the, the party that is there is, is more powerful, than, is more important than the state. Mm. I'm saying no. My loyalty goes to the president because he's the president of the state of Ghana. Not because it's MPP or NDC. That's what I want, the difference I want to make. Mm -hmm. I'm loyal to him because he's the head of state of my country. No, I, I get that. What I'm asking you is to assess the military today. Are they loyal to the state or they are loyal to politicians? I am not one of them. So but from can, where you sit? From you one know, of the It's not their fault. You see, the politicians politicize them, and I don't like it. I don't want to give you examples on national national things. But 
when when you are president and you remove the chief of defense staff mm -hmm. for no apparent reason, mm -hmm. let me give my own example. I have 42 years so when I retire. I have no pension for more than 40 years. I don't know whether anybody will beat me in that score. And I'm not going yet. And, and because the president didn't like me for some reason. I don't know whether it's my tribe, whatever. I don't, I don't know. Mm. And I will not succumb to any, any politician because he doesn't like me. I will, I will, I will be loyal to you as mm. president. Whether you are for MPP, NDC, I will salute you. I but not because I'm a party member. Mm. I don't, that one... No, it won't happen. What, what could be done about that, particularly the appointment of CDS? CDS, I mean, CDS, Nkrumah appointed, Nkrumah changed the CDS in 1965. Mm -hmm. And that was part of the problem of the coup d'etat that overthrew Nkrumah. Maybe it was his right to do it for the president. But you see, when, when, when you do these things... Maybe, maybe we should change the appointment process. No, I think it's okay. See, good people, I don't, mean, I don't need a constitution mm. to do good. I have goodness in me. I don't need a constitution to tell me do this. No, no, no. When you are doing something which is bad, which is not right, you know it. But you know because I have the power to do it, I'm doing it. No, I, I don't behave like that. You see, so when, when Nkrumah had to change the president. Actually, oh, no, had to, you have to change the, according to the constitution, then and now, even now. Well, do it in a way that the military will know that the man you have chosen is the right person. Mm. The military, they, we know our, our, we know those who are good, we know. We know. So when you go and choose the wrong person, they will know. Why do you think that uh, government after government have failed to conclusively deal with the insecurity situation in Boko? Boko. There is a similar situation within the... Um, in the end, mm -hmm. it was, it's not, it's not, it's completely peaceful. No, it's, it's not. Why do you think we haven't been able to restore peace in those areas? These issues, they are very difficult. Again, because politicians make things difficult. I have one in my, in my own case, Winneba. We had a case with 19, I think, 41 or thereabouts. I was a little baby. But so, I remember what they said. The issue hasn't been solved up to now. Mm. It's still bedeviling. Peace in the in the area there. I don't but, know why. And the politicians make it difficult. They use it to to get votes. Oh, I see. They use it. I mean, this is a sad thing. They use this unfortunate situation to win power. Mm. So, how does it make you feel when you hear a former member of the NPP, Hope Sinadoya, uh, talk about how they used uh, explosives to scare uh, people off from coming in into the country through uh, the Volta region to vote? See, some human beings are born evil. I wasn't born evil. And you're going to have men and women who are evil. You can't stop them. But well, they were born like that. But there are many, many of us who are not evil. Who, even though we are trained to shoot to kill, we don't go to commit such a crime unless mm. we have to do it. Mm. All I'm saying here is that this country, look, we had two elections this week. One in South Africa, one in India. India, I lived in India for one year. I know India very well. I there for one year. I'm on the top, top, top school there. And the thing that I saw that gave me hope for the future. South Africa, for the first time, the ANC didn't have overall you know, uh, control of, of parliament. They had to talk to other smaller parties to form a government. In India, you know, again, what, what I've seen is that there are many, many small parties which are mm -hmm. stringing up. And those small parties are important because they dilute the power of the big parties. Mm. So they don't have, when, when they need to talk to a smaller party to form a government. And, and, and I want to take you up on that, but I want you to answer my question on what the implications could be on that uh, dynamic Obviously, if, if Boku, you can't solve the... the um, the Mampushi and the Kusasi issue, because the political interference. Mm -hmm. I will beg those politicians who are doing this, that look, they are not helping the nation mm -hmm. by interfering in issues that could be. I had the Bokunaba when I was a preliminary uh, advisor, called him to the castle and talked to him. I went to a something and talked to the, the note to him for about, uh, you know, all, in my position as 
But there are people who want to inflame the situation mm -hmm. to take political advantage of it. I'm saying this is wrong because you can burn the country so, if you don't take care. So it, it, that's for Boko, but in the ca case of the Volta Togo situation, uh, what would be the way forward? Well, why do you do that? Especially well, no, when we, yes. you know, we've had a Ghanaian admit that, it, you know, in two separate occasions that we threw explosives in Togo, we threw explosives in Ghana because we want to prevent people from coming across the border. Could this have impl security implications? It uh, does, but what I would tell Ghanaians is this, this country, we shouldn't ban it. All the actions we are taking can lead to a massive chaos if mm. we don't take care. And knowing that what we are doing is evil, it doesn't help anybody. You know, and I, I would advise them, because there are security implications. If you don't stop doing them, they can explode. And all of us will be in difficulty. So the election that is going to come, for example, I know it will be, be, be coming to that. Yes. People are worried about, I, I, I'm surprised that in 1992, we opted for a civilian administration. Close to, close to how many years? 32 years now. Mm -hmm. NDC 16, MPP 16. And we don't see any, in fact, it's much worse now than even under, I would say, even under military regime. I mean, support of peace. But we are scheming to undermine the opponent, opponent instead of scheming together to make Ghana a better place. We are not doing that. Mm, I see. So it, it's going to harm us if we don't stop doing that. Mm. Ghana has been referred to as the island of peace amidst, you know, uh, terrorism affected countries. Why do you think that Ghana is still peaceful uh, despite all that is going on around us? The peace you're talking about is very fragile. You know, it is fragile. And on the 3rd of June, 1979, everything was quiet like this. And by the morning, hell broke loose. And I mean, hell broke loose, hell really broke loose. So it looks, how can you say that Ghana is an island of peace in a sub-region which is chaotic? When your young people can't get jobs to mm. do, when your children, can, you can't have one good meal a day. How can you say that? You can't say that. Well, the, uh, you know, Ghana's ambassador to Burkina Faso thinks that is the case because uh, Ghana is providing a safe haven for terrorists. Which terrorists? From where? Terrorists from Burkina Faso, from Mali, from Niger. He goes on to say that some of them actually come into our country uh, to use our hospitals. Does that come to you as a surprise? No, I, I, don't, I don't believe this. Of, I mean, our borders are porous. You can cross the border easily. There's nothing there. You can just go, go, go across, you know. So I don't think that it's a government policy mm. to do what this gentleman is claiming we are doing. All I'm saying is that, you know, Africa, we have had problems over the years because we haven't had leaders, apart from Nkrumah. I, I will mention Nkrumah even then because, you know, I serve under him as a young officer mm. who was dedicated to the cause of Ghana and Africa. And he's a human, he was a human being. Right. And to err is human. But there are people today who are prepared to, to do something to harm Ghana only because they want power. Mm -hmm. They are prepared to do it because they want power at all costs. I don't know what power does to them. I don't know. I, I want power. When I, when I was campaigning for President Gofado, I had power to build a better Ghana. I had power to buy land cruisers or anything. No, that wasn't my aim. You, you, you've said a lot about how you worked under, you know, Ghana's first president. <laughs> yes. What happened to the Ghana Industrial Holding Corporation and uh, the group of comp uh, factories? In fact, you asked me the question, you asked me the question a y years before. Well, 1974, no, no, 1972, 74. Mm. Our chairman of Gehawk the 10 big companies of Gehawk. I was chairman of them. So I knew Big Gehawk pretty well, mm -hmm. extremely well. You know, before even I came to work with uh, President Akufuado. What happened? I saw nothing wrong with Gehawk when I was there. I saw nothing wrong. I was there for two years, then I left under a temporal regime. It was doing well. You know, it was doing well. Um, Many of the managers now, I don't know whether they are alive today. But all that is left of Gehawk now is the distillery. What, what has happened to Ghana is that we're prepared to sell our assets, destroy them in the interest of foreigners. You see, this is what saddens me sometimes. 
I'm at my age, in two years' time, I'm gone. I don't know what you're leaving behind for our children, my children, my grandchildren. I don't know. You are leaving them nothing. Today, as I speak to you, I don't know how long ago you were in Makola. Old Kingsway, Cocoa Board coming down to old UTC. The road there is choked. You can't, you can't drive on it. Women, mothers are selling on the, sit, sit, sitting on the road and selling there, and nobody cares about them. If the government does have brains, who want to help Ghana? Trade fair. I've lived in Birmingham for more than 60 years. I know it very well. I pass there almost every day. Rather than building another supermarket, for those of us who are living this side of Accra, to the eastern, uh, to the eastern side of Accra, in Medina, you know, 37, Bema Camp, uh, you know, all these areas, to shop there, to you know, put, put less pressure on Accra, we are selling it. Mm. I don't know where the hell our people are going to live. No, it's terrible. And you know, it's like that thing, when it's being done, the member of the government, even the president, I would have, look, I'm telling you, I would have walked up to the president, that, please, 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 don't please, do that. Don't do that. You're hating the people. President Mitz wouldn't dare even do it. And I would have walked away. I left Rollins and went away. Mm. 1982. I left the college. I resigned and went away. Yeah, what made you walk away from, uh, you know, President Rawlins in 1982? Because we agreed to hand over power with, by June. Mm. I couldn't see them. I mean, I came in there because I wanted to, to stabilize Ghana. was in, in terrible state. Terrible state. And then, with a few other people, hand over power and then get out of politics. But it changed their mind. Mm. So, so, we, we, so, I mean, essentially, we still don't know what happened to Gayhawk. No, Gayhawk, I mean, I left. I left in one piece. There was all these other, other, there were 10 companies. 10? Ten. 10. Okay. Big companies. They were all functioning very well. At 10, not 100 factories? No, no, no. no. Okay. There ten. were 10. Mm. Footwear, there was uh, uh, oil. They, they sold many of them. And I was saying before, today I'm told that we are selling uh, state Hotels or something. I don't know. Is that correct? I don't know. Yes. Uh, we're, and who we're is buying them? The Agri Minister. And it's right. What we do think, you think? We think it's right. Well, you tell me. See, in this country, think? we should be careful. I kept on saying we should be careful. I kept on saying this. There's another role that didn't get up. That, no, we should be careful. I think the people in this country don't matter. They don't care. I mean, come on. The, when we vote for parliamentarians or president, we are voting for them to run Ghana for our benefit, not for their benefit. You get me clear? And I don't like what I'm hearing. I don't like what I'm seeing. Mm. We are hurting our society. It's not right. I see. 1998, you were campaign manager for President Akofu. President then, Akofu, then, then yes, candidate yes, Akofu, Ado. Akofu Ado. But what was the transition between being in the Rollins Cup and then coming into uh, an Akufuado camp on the opposing side. You know, what you happened? Know, what happened? I love Ghana. I want a better Ghana. That's why I got up in the night to go and build a school, six schools, driving alone at 70 plus. I want to see a better Ghana before I go. That's the only motivation. You see, that I could leave Rollins and go to support Akufuado. Because I want somebody who will make Ghana a better place than I came to find it. I was a, my father was a fisherman. I became chief of defense staff. Mm -hmm. I went to Sandhurst and taught my class in Britain, a fisherman's son. So I want a better Ghana. Mm -hmm. That's my only motivation. Yeah. Because I don't, if I don't, there's no way I would serve with somebody if I didn't like the person. If the two of us didn't, didn't uh, you know, uh, get on, I would resign. Mm -hmm. So not because I want money. I don't have anything. But I want a Ghana that is fit for everybody's child. Not only my children. That is why I will leave uh, Rollins. And later on, I'm talking about Rollins, we became so close to friend, friends that we think came here every two weeks. I see. I'm telling you, two of us will sit down with a few others. And I'll call to King Kay, I'm telling you. But you left him for I the left, next hottest. Uh, I, I got angry. He is a tough man. I was a tough man. So we left. But then we came together because he had things that gelled us, mm, that put us together. I see. So then you worked with, uh, you know, President Takufuado yes. uh, then. I, I used to for parliament in 1996. Okay. 
come from Britain. I left the country for 10 years. I got angry with Rawlings. I resigned, left the country. Left Britain for 10 years when I came back. Then I used to be angry with politics. Because they, they, they fought the Fourth Republic. Mm -hmm. And they were, the way they were behaving in Parliament, I didn't like it as a military man. So my wife said, go and join them. Don't make noise here. Go, go to, go and to. you did. And I did. Which I, constituency was that? Was that? Funiba. But okay. the, I thought, I thought it was, the party is like military. It's a rotten thing. It didn't thing. work out. It's a rotten thing. Mm. It's, and, and it, it's so, so, I mean, something drew you to candidate Akufuado then? Now, what happened was this. I used to like the I mean, I used to like his. Just, there, was, there, was, there was a few others. Dr. Mm -hmm. Preku, there was uh, President Dan Kufu, and many others. But somehow, I got to like him. So we, 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 after the election, which I lost, then he mounted this campaign to lead the NPP. And I couldn't afford to go back to the Rollins whom I just left. So I joined him. And I joined him. And we, we, know, we, we taught the country. We, taught, we, we, we did our best. So you believed in him? Not, not, not today, if you ask me. Yes. You know, what about now? I left him and went and supported President Mills. That tells you a lot. No, it doesn't. What does it say? <laughs> You see, the, I, I, the gain, you see, I keep on telling you who the hell I am. Mm -hmm. If I don't like something, you know, I will not live with it. What didn't you like? President Mills came from nowhere. I didn't know him. I met him at uh, M Plaza. I met him at M Plaza. There was something then I, well, then I met him, and I liked him. So I switched my support. Like I told you before, I'm looking for a better Ghana. Mm -hmm. If someone can give me a better Ghana, I will switch my support. Do, so, so then between the time you switched from, a, you know, another Danko Akufuado as a mm -hmm. candidate to the camp of Mills, mm -hmm. you didn't think that uh, uh, another Danko Akufuado at the time was going to give us a better Ghana? No, to be honest with you, I felt Mills was better. You, you, you thought Mills was better at achieving a better Ghana at that time? Well... I had to look at the two, mm. two, two candidates, you know. It's something that Ghanaians will not do. But I'm not in politics for anything. So what were, what were the considerations you made? No, no, I, just, I just look at the two. Mm. I mean, I just look at the two. And compare them, this one will be achieved. I, what, if, you, if you saw Mills, if you saw Mills, Mills couldn't do a lot of things that they are doing today in the MPP. Mills, as a human being, was too nice to do them. Couldn't do it. Mm. You know, so is that, that, I mean, is that to say that you saw this coming? Where the NPP has taken Ghana today, you know, where what we're experiencing today, in your own words, you saw it coming. I, have, I mean, but would they have NDC done better? Would they have done better? No, to me, no. We, we are in a crisis as a nation for leadership. We are in a crisis, a type of leader that will inspire. Us and, and, and you know, lead the country to a proper you know, future. We don't have it. We don't have that kind of a leader. No, we don't have so it. So the, the Akufuado you believed in then, is not the same as the Akufuado we are seeing today leading this country? The country is in a mess. The country is in a mess. It is in a mess. I was walking around the American embassy and I saw a man walking naked from top to bottom. I turned my head away. I couldn't look at it. And the policemen who are there, nobody cares. Mm -hmm. I mean, the whole nation, our institutions don't care, the military, nobody seems to care. What kind of society is this? And there's a kind of island of what? Peace and stability. One of mad men roaming the streets. I mean, come We're on. on a taking time bomb, would you say? No, no, I'm, I don't. Uh, the future looks very bleak. Mm. The I future see. looks very bleak. But then bleak. he also joined GUM in 2020. Because I'm looking for a better leader. But where is Goom today? <laughs> where is Goom today? Mm -hmm. I, again, again, again. You see, this tells you I'm being truthful with what I'm telling you. Why well, not all this have failed me? When Mills left the scene, I followed the MPP in the NDC cell with John Mahama. But it didn't work out. Mm. So I left. I see. What do you say to people who say that it is not a matter of putting Ghana first? but it's actually because you are after a very significant position in government. And when, when you see signs, <laughs> when you see signs of it not happening in Party A, you move on to Party B. The only position I haven't heard is the president, but I've heard 
of what's everything. <laughs> so, so what, when your father was a fisherman, you were fishing in Winnipeg, you become chief of defense staff. Mm. You go to Sandhurst, the top school in the world, military I school. See. And whatever you want. So it cannot be true. No, 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 no it's not true. We'll, we'll come back and talk more politics. Don't go away. Welcome back to Hot Issues. Uh, thank you so much again for sitting with us. So um, I, I did want to ask you, was there any time in our politics mm. that there was foreign interference in how things occurred here? Not long ago, I mean, I had that Ghana was going to sign an agreement with the U.S. or something. You know, and I gave a lecture, I think at Legon, and made mention of this. The political elite here in the party, in the government, heard about this. So I had a, a call from the Minister for National Security and Minister of Defense. Come and clarify Ghana's position vis-a-vis -vis agreement with the U.S. You know, what I, I don't want us to. We are a small nation, but we are proud people. Anyone to use money, whatever. Nkrumah will not stand to, uh, for this, and I won't stand for this. You know, so the minister had a word with the minister. Had a word with the, with the mm. minister for, for defense, minister for national security. I was still not satisfied. Because, you know, because of our poverty, we are going around with the bowl in hand and asking for, you know, And that, I don't believe in that. Mm. I don't believe in that. And we should be proud of our mm. independence and But to, to, to what extent? Has American intelligence, particularly the CIA, been involved in our um, political life across all the republics? Funny enough, even under Nkrumah, you were, you were, you know, working with them. Even under Nkrumah. Mm. In what ways were we working with them? Nkrumah was working with everybody on this planet. The Russian. I was in Moscow for six months training with the with the KGB. I went to the CIA in Langley, Washington. So I'm saying that it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a world issue that we need to... But did they meddle? Did the no, CIA ever meddle in our politics? Not, not, not to my knowledge. Not to my knowledge. You know, we train them. We, we train with them. I train with the, with the, with the Russians. Let's uh, train with the, with, the, with, the, with the intelligence. It's not something, something strange. We are cooperating in all kinds of areas. But to sell our sovereignty... And for example, have American jurisdiction on our soil. That is asking for too much. You must really shatter to, to realize that we are still going to the IMF even now. Yes, even now. Because the economy is, is, is dead, it's broken. Mm. We have no other way. We are dead. So even if you give us water, we take the water, otherwise we are, we are gone. Mm. So, but we shouldn't run the economy to the extent that we become a beggar nation. You know, and they do whatever they like with you because you are begging. You. Today, as I said before, if we go to America embassy, I'm told other embassies to, you know, and see Ghanaian youth Very well. in their numbers. So if you allow yourself economically, politically, militarily to be weak, mm -hmm. they will control you. Let's talk about the elections. Uh, what were the lapses of 2020? And what do you hope that, you know, security of 2024 will take into consideration? I worry about elections a lot especially when you have statements coming from the two, two major political parties. And maybe they said they won't have a power. They will do so only to themselves, if that is true, what I heard. And they say we're going to get power at all costs. It's a recipe for what? For violence. Mm -hmm. But they should know that, see, uh, I think, again, let me quickly refer to South African election a few days ago. And I, I was amazed at how peaceful it was. I was amazed at how the Indian election has gone. Even though the government in power, the party in power, didn't achieve what it wanted to achieve. They have accepted it. Would the MPP need to accept that? I'm sure they're not going to accept that. In fact, so, I, What makes you think so? Because of the utterances. Mm. I hope and pray that the Electoral Commissioner, Madame Jean Mensa, I know very well. And that, you know, I, pray to, I, I just ask all our, 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 People that are the military, the police, the letter commission, and so on. Play the game as clearly, as plainly as you can. Don't try to favor anybody. And I know the woman 
She's a good woman, and I have no, 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 no fear that she'll do the wrong thing. You know, but, but all the others, if you're a voter, if you don't take care, Ghana can, within a twinkle, look, it's, it's, it's amazing. Even in America, after the election, last election, they were, they were mob marching to the Congress and burn it. Mm. So it can happen if you don't take care. Mm. I see. Would you consider that the biggest threat as we go into election 2024? The biggest threat. Mm -hmm. Security threat. No, I mean, it depends on how the participants behave. I mean, if it's not, what, what then would you consider if, the biggest threat? It is uh, a small, a small, a small, in the light of our current economic situation. A lot of anger in people's chest. A lot of anger. So anybody can do something stupid when he's angry. So don't tempt him to use anger to destroy our country. Let everybody play the game as well as they can play it. Let all those small parties, they play a very vital role in India, and they diffuse the party, the big parties vote, mm. and then, so that the next party that comes to power, we need a coalition which of, of some smaller parties that will also you know, dampen their ambition. Do you think our smaller parties are capable of that? We've mm. had over three decades of NPP. And they are capable. They're capable? They're capable. They're capable. I've talked to some of them. I mean, they're capable. Get this young man and talk to him. Kwame. Kwame Bidiako. Please. Mm. You believe in him? Yes. I believe in him because I've talked to him four or five times. And again, in search of uh, somebody, he's, 40, he's ten, just turned 44. Do I take it as your, you know? Yes, uh, I'm behind him. You're behind new, yes. the New Force Movement? Yes, okay. because, you know, He's not, he's not a saint. He's not a saint. He's human. But when you listen, you have to judge a man or a good, so any candidate in totality, mm -hmm. plus or minus. And right. I believe that if he can have some... Nkrumah came from abroad and joined the UGCC. Mm -hmm. He left them and set up a small band of Kobodice, Kofi Bakun, and all these people were half-educated. So, so the MPP and DC haven't been useful to this country at all? What can you point out? For 32 years, the road Alabadi, the Wudiba Road, is a disaster. At all? It's a disaster. I've, I'm nothing. It's a disaster. But that's also an indictment on you because along the line, you were part of this 32 year rule. For how long? National advisor and for, CBS. For, 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 oh, national advisor. Yeah. Yes. To uh, Mills. But Mills, God took him away, and then Mama took over. And what do you see? No, no, I'm, I'm a disappointed person. I thought Ghana would be a better place than we are today, but it hasn't. So it's about time people, that young people especially, change. And the time to change is now. Thank you for sitting with us. God bless you. Bless you too. My guest today has been retired Brigadier General Joseph Nunu Mensah, former National Security Advisor to President Mills of Blessed Memory and former Chief of the defense stuff. If you enjoyed our conversation, there's always a playback on Facebook and on YouTube. Thank you so much. Next week, we'll bring you another exciting conversation. I'm Kemini Amano. Bye-bye.